Okay. <coughs> Good evening, let's start. Today it's on uh, <coughs> images. So in principle it's the same story as we had uh, last week with colors. But now it's on, uh, on arrays, on, on uh, colors and their uh, aggregation. So you find, like always, the sources that are on our, on our web page. Because images is always a lot. It's, uh, it's 250, uh, 250 megabytes uh, today. So uh, it's this edition. <coughs> takes the content of uh, of this zip file, expand it, take it as a list of uh, of files, put it into our uh, working file, and then uh, replace the old versions of the files, and this uh, should work there. What you get now we have a big directory. Always start with. Uh, start, we evaluate this stuff, and then all the menus here, and everything should uh, work fine. The menus always <coughs> scan what is within the folder, and th by that you can access all the files within. All the files which are starting with SO1, all the files which uh, start with episodes, or on media, uh, and so on. So in principle these are these files here, and then they with these menus, I simply open the file, replace it, put it to the same uh, position and size as the uh, hosting file, and that's it. So I uh, re recommend that you again try to install the style sheet, because if the style sheet is wrong, try to do it again. In, in this version, because if the style sheet is wrong, it's always uh, very ugly. And you, for example, with the questions, you can't uh, distinguish between question and answers, and it's, it's a little uh, messy. Then try to install that and keep that in your preferences of uh, of uh, Mathematica. So today <coughs> we are on images. This is a huge bundle of, of different tools. They are conceptually not this complicated, so I uh, recommend that uh, if you like, so you can play around with it and look through it, like in a, in a lexicon. Simply check it out, what, what is there, so you get an idea what can be done. So Mathematica is uh, extremely powerful in, in uh, image processing uh, and pattern recognition and uh, face detection, what, whatever, all these kind of things. Uh, you can stitch pictures, you can uh, 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 parallelize uh, uh, and get rid of the perspective distortions. All this stuff is, is there very easily, and I give you uh, references to that. You can count objects, you can name objects, whatever you like. So that's uh, there. So like always, <coughs> Uh, the lecture is a kind of red line go throughout the through these uh, through these hierarchies, and uh, look what is there. Whether you're interested, go in depth, go ba go back, go to the next chapter, and so on. So this is uh, how the script works. So now we are pretty <coughs> uh, stable with our conceptions. So we had <coughs> this. Just to give a reference where images are, we had uh, <coughs> this uh, uh, heliocentric virtue, like Copernicus. This is the uh, icon for that. We have the uh, um, geocentric, like uh, Ptolemy or Enlightenment. This is geocentric in uh, quotation marks. It's, uh, this is the icon for that. We distinguish between uh, sh sculpture and painting, and, and this is uh, important for you, we have uh, image and graphics as the uh, principal formats for that. So with the image we are by, with painting, with graphics and CAD systems, we are on sculpture. 
So this will be from the next week on that we go on uh, computer graphics. And you will see that with our Lambda calculus, you can treat, that's the beauty of it, you can treat all the same. So we can work on text, on images, on movies, on graphics, on graphs, and whatever, all the same language. So you don't have to, to learn uh, uh, Rhino uh, vector works, and you have to Photoshop, and so on. In principle, it's all the same. That's the beauty of it. And this is what I want you to, uh, to get an understanding of how it is. And this is what I think is, it, because of that, it's important that you get literate, not uh, to get uh, used to a certain tool. So, therefore, <coughs> if graphics, oh, so it's just a summary. So this is our sculpture, images are with paintings. Graphics are with geometry, images are with arithmetics. Just in these symmetries. And a lot of you asked what can we do with, um, <coughs> with our questions. So it's getting better with the questions. <laughs> I don't believe that I get questions from all of you. I've got relatively a few. So, but um, <clears throat> what I think good questions are if you start doing gymnastics with these concepts. That's a simple thing. <laughs> so that, for example, if you say <coughs> uh, images, image and graphics is like that, this is image then is uh, geocentric or corresponds to geocentric, or so the same stage like geocentric, graphics is on heliocentric. And I say, hmm, what is this? Or with arithmetics and with numbers. What is the relation with images and numbers then? Why is images not with characters? So today I will tell you how images are with numbers. How this works. <laughs> you are a little late, huh? <laughs> so, or what we had, just these kinds of things. So to reason about that and uh, make these kind of combinations in the symmetries. And uh, a lot of questions tends toward that. Make a small gymnastics with these concepts in a certain fashion. So, if it's like that, for example, if Graph, if we are with sculptures, then it's about position and location uh, with graphics. Then image is with balance and reason. So, what? Simply change this concept and, and, uh, and look what happens. So, graphics is then with identities, the image with individuals. So what people don't uh, uh, <coughs> distinguish between the identity, which is a concept of localization <coughs> of, uh, <coughs> of the um, human intellect, its identity, intellectual human is with individual. And this is with image. So we can make an image of an intellectual human, but not of the human intellect. Therefore, if you make this brain scan, so an image of your brain, you can't measure <laughs> the, uh, <coughs> the uh, human intellect, which is at stake today. But you can make an image of the intellectual human. So then I told you, machine intelligence is on this, on this side which is uh, <coughs> uh, and uh, not on this side. This, these kind of things. Or the paradoxes, the ratio, the thinking, and so on. That's, and these sentences are gymnastics around that, and now you get very simple. So if you have a new concept you want to reason about, or if you have <coughs> an, an architect writing, having a, a certain uh, writing about it's artifacts or about a certain thought, then try to position him. From which side he's looked to which side, and then fill it with these concepts of the skeleton. And play around. Play with them on stage. Let them talk. I thought to you that these concepts are persons. They talk like heroes on stage. And then it's 
easily and very fast getting, uh, getting uh, rich. And you easily can look it up, what is he saying to that and that so on. And by that you can make your, uh, your uh, stage play and your story. So that's a very powerful tool. From here, there's an exercise simply saying, if it is like that, you can make it just the other way around, try what happens, whether this is possible. So change the concept and look what happens, whether it's okay or not. So this is what I tell, told you, don't try to understand it. <laughs> Put it on stage and look what happens. They play, they are rich. So this is a fast exercise here to go with something. So graphics is this mastership image with uh, here. Okay. Now with the numbers and uh, with <clears throat> over here. <coughs> with tuning. To get you an idea how numbers are so it's a kind of the rendering of numbers is um, is uh, our images. So to get an idea of how this works, this is um, Plato, Timaeus. How the world is created? You can read it. It's 360 uh, BC. And what they are doing is, if you if you read that. They have multiple uh, <coughs> They have the um, uh, the exponential and uh, exponentiations of two and three, and bring them into a ratio. So you have two lines, two by three, in exponentiation, and three by two in exponentiation. The whole story. So and you get these lines. This is a ratio of minor major tuning, and you need five elements. And this is a, these are the proportions of minor tuning. So these formulas <coughs> reflect on themselves and project it back in the interval between one and two to bring it to, to the circles. Very simple. So you multiply it with, by two, and if it's b a, a, a greater than, uh, than one, then uh, just circle it, it uh, around. So simply uh, multiply it with two and keep it on the circle. By that, if it's out of one, if you have it linear, then you are out of your, uh, <coughs> of your uh, section, segment. If you have one on a circle, multiply it with two, and you're back again. This is what this function is doing. And then you got get these two lines of proportions. If you bring that to a circle, you have minor and major, and this is the Pythagorean tuning of instruments. That's all. These are the tunes. <clears throat> yeah, you can read it. That's the first thing. There's a lot of theory, and all this tuning was um, with the harmonic tuning in Baroque. This was changed. This is, um, um, uh, I'm not sure in all this conception, this is good for um, a mono voice or a monotone instrument. It's very complicated uh, to have uh, multiple instruments in sync, having her own voice. It's only one voice. And in Baroque, they had been, with another tuning, they had been able to, uh, to talk with multiple voice uh, 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 in, in sync. This needs another tuning. So it's, it's a kind of vertical uh, to, to, to this kind of things. <coughs> so this is a tuning. And this is the formula. And this is how God created the world with these numbers, intermediate them. So, this is very interesting, this tuning of space. 
So a, this is a kind of image of space. So the space sounds. Now, we are doing the same with time. <clears throat> So, again, these references, this uh, the uh, <coughs> Ptolemyan circle of the, of, 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 the, uh, of the cosmos, circulating of the cosmos, bringing it back to the plain Earth with this, uh, with this uh, geocentric, with the human intellect, intellectual humans, and they are following these lines. And here we, <coughs> we had this... Uh, this distinction between form and shape of things. So what we are now talking about is the image. We want to have a number for the shape of the A. We want to make arithmetics on the shape. So how it tuned. How the, how the pixels are tuned. That's what we want to do. We can do it directly. So this is how so remember, <coughs> this is how we go to patterns. So instead of in music, <coughs> we uh, go to tiling the same thing. So we, we simply say, for example, we have uh, one third of the circle, and then we, we, uh, we run around here in space and make a line, and then we have one, two, three, one, two, three. So if you do it in <coughs> with a table with um, with a field of, of two, you have i and j for x and y directions. You make say, uh, 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 six iterations, six circles of the thing, <coughs> uh, and uh, put that into a list. And the list then in the table form, and you see what happens. One. 01, 01, 01. So this is, these are the six. We make, we add both i and j and make the modular of two. So which always means this counting and repeating and, and so on. So modular is one plus one is zero, one plus zero is one, one plus zero plus zero is <laughs> two plus one is, uh, is uh, one and so on. So it's always circulating these numbers. So this is um, the, the modular. <coughs> so by that, we render it in a different way. Very simple. This is, these are the numbers. These are the patterns. So these are the patterns this is of the patterns. We put it uh, short. So you see the numbers here got a gray level, then rectangle on the position, gray level uh, here, and so on. And uh, put that, render that as graphics with an image size of 90, 192, and you get this checkerboard. So it's just the rendering of that. The interesting is we are just rotating on different levels numbers, O's and ones, and then to six, six by six, rotating these kind of things. But that you get a checkerboard. <coughs> And in architecture, we see these kind of patterns working with that on different levels and, and, and so on. So this is a, these are the test animations in, in space. So these are images in space. Or this is a tuning of space. So these are how we do the tiling here on the floor. How we put uh, the chairs in this line. 12 or 16 in one line, which are organizing that. So this is a tuning in space, or an image of space. But they don't draw it, they hear it. There was no drawing, no major drawing in that time, before 1500. They wrote about it, made symbols for that. They made very simple sketches, but no drawing. So, now, not in time, but with the nascent in, in, uh, in, and not in space, but in time. The same story. 
<coughs> so the line we headed with the numbers is not one, two, three, but all the in-between of a rolling ball. So what's it? So we to since um, enlightenment, we have these uh, nice functions cosine and uh, sinus and so on. <clears throat> and they are just to get coordinate numbers of circle, of circulations. So in this case, I say <clears throat> n is 2, so I want to have n was how many, how many circulations do I want to have? f is my function, and now I make a table, x goes from O to 4 pi, so it's two circles, and I have steps of uh, uh, pi by 12, so it's 24 steps per circle. So which means with two circles I uh, have 48 numbers. So I divided two circles and 40, uh, 48 sections. So it got very simple, so I have a, a, a clear line of 48 numbers. And with this cosine I can split a circle in sections. So I don't have to make crazy constructions as the Greeks had uh, needed to do, with triangulations and circulations and so on, simply with this cosine and sinus. So the table is here, and you see it's mostly irrational numbers. And it's always a 2 and a 3, it's very important as well. <laughs> it's a lot to do that we uh, uh, split it in. in. In 12, you can do it at 15, and then you have different things. But if you make it proper, it, you keep these simple numbers. So this is a rendering of these numbers. So you see the circle going half one circle two thirds. And these are exactly these numbers and road, which is from the circle, the projection to the line, which is geocentric. Getting the, 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 the movements of the stars to get my next step playing on Earth. To tune space or time. This is tuning. To know that if I'm here, it's somehow I'm on. Yeah. Then you have this tessellation and so on. So, if I have <coughs> these numbers, so points on a circle, Fourier, that's a French mathematician from the uh, beginning, from 18th century. <coughs> Fourier is able to get the circuits appropriate for the movement. So it's just the other way around. So we will go in, uh, in the third semester, we will go in detail to that. It's important that, <laughs> that you can measure points and ask, what is the circle of it? So instead of projecting from out the irrational circle, you can have these paradox points and say, what is the circle of it? What would be the circle? So if I project that to the cosmo, cosmical order, what would be the stars for this point? Or the step from this point to this point? This is for you. So what we see here, we had, with this curve, we created two circles with these numbers. And for you, it's nothing but that, uh, say, this data, for you, don't take the first value, because this is the, um, the amplitude of the whole thing. And this is just to make a plot of it. To make a nice graphics and specify that, and you see, it's mo it's it's a lot of a little noise because we have very few points, not a precise circle. But you see, we have uh, <coughs> a, 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 a partition of two. So this, 
we have a circulation which fits two time in this in times in this interval. So this is you can ask for the circulation of numbers with Fourier. And what they call it the numbers of a circulation, they call that the frequency domain. And if you enroll these numbers, this is a time domain. So this two here is frequency domain, that's a frequency, and this is a wave in, in, in time domain. So this is geometry. So this is frequency, and this creates a time domain from out frequency. This mechanism here. Fourier takes the result and gets the frequencies back. It's very important that you can expect whatever you're doing somewhere, you always can find the inverse stuff somewhere. You always can expect that there is something inverse on the other side. Yeah. Here, frequency domain. And here we have now particles and pixels, and we have wave and images. Remember the rotating A, the image is with the A, and then these 24 by 24 pixels, they are on the particles. And I can use Fourier to get from one side to the other in time. Not in space. So this is, if you trust our skeleton, <laughs> not this complicated. <laughs> this is a, but this is a good example. Try it with uh, Wikipedia. What is Fourier transformation? Try it with uh, linear algebra and so on. It's uh, for me, it's a disaster. <laughs> so. For me, it was a very good experience that um, that I can do these kind of philosophical, uh, uh, theoretical thinking. I don't need to understand these crazy formulas because I can play around in mathematics and look how it behaves. I can use it. So what you see is you can go from line to circle, from circle to line, from pixel to image, from image to pixel, from character to number, from number to character, in time, not in space, if you use Fourier. That's beautiful. And now I will show you how it works. <coughs> go a little. Um, <clears throat> so, we have, uh, j this is just this formula, sino uh, sinus, with uh, frequency and phase. So this is imaginary, so we will have it uh, later as well. So this is the imaginary part and the real part of, of a complex number. So we are talking of, of complex numbers. Now, and uh, here now I'm changing the I link this variable f with dynamic, dynamic here in the slider, f, therefore it's linked. So and now I can change the, the frequency. This is, the slider is in frequency domain, and this is in time domain. It's spreading sound or, uh, or a certain uh, dissemination, uh, 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 partitioning of, of, of a grid, and, and so on. So, and uh, this is a phase. You see what happens if I add it here? This is imaginary time. So I can move the whole story and adjust it properly to what I intend to have. That's a phase. So you need the frequency and the phase to adjust the wave within a certain interval. All systems, all constructions always need an interval. 
A system is defined by decision, what is in and what is out. And within, you always try to get this tuned. Things which are inside in a system needs to work. It will be part of the system. And the distinction is what is part of the distinction and what not. A system is always defined with this exclusion, exclusivity of things, of the rest of the world. <clears throat> so, and this is an example of that. So we can, we can adjust a certain interval and tune it. Like an instrument, you need, yeah, you need the beginning and the end, and then you, you have to tune it, and then you can play. But it needs to be an interval. So there's no system which is not an interval. Now, the same story in, uh, in 2D, the whole thing, but I'm adding, uh, I have uh, um, this plot in 3D now, not plot, I have the X coordinate and I have the Y in parallel, and I simply add, so the, the amplitude of my drawing is the scene of uh, F from X and the cosine of uh, uh, FY. So, and again, I can change x and y. So, I, didn't, I don't, don't have the, the face, but you can understand what the face is about to make a plane of numbers. To make a, to make a projection of numbers to a plane. So, and these are the images. So, when the amplitude is high, it is white. And when the amplitude is black, uh, it's down, it's black. Look how it works. Two numbers. <laughs> to tune a space in time. Yeah? Good. Next. <laughs> This is how uh, <laughs> JPEG compression works. <laughs> now, <clears throat> you can start overlaying these frequencies in, <clears throat> in 1D. So we have function 1 is sinus from x, uh, uh, function 2 is sinus from 2x by 3, 2 to 3rd, and f3 is f1 plus uh, f2. And you see how it is. F1, F2, double, and then if you add them, you get the result. There's two frequencies. And this is the Fourier of the two. You have uh, the two and the three. And then you add them, and you get a more complex image. Or if you make it different in x and in y, this, they are synced now in x and in y. If you make the difference, you need four numbers to play all the different combinations possible with this resolution in a certain interval. <coughs> so, now we go real. This is an image, it's always Gerd Richter, like this. <clears throat> and this is the frequency domain. So Betty has uh, uh, 240 by 182 uh, uh, numbers, X and Y, in color. And it's the same thing if you make Fourier. You say here, we say here Fourier on each color, uh, image separate and so on. And it's the same dimension. And now we look for the first 36 frequencies of, if it's RGB, of the, of the second color on the green level. So this, uh, these are the frequencies in green. The amplitude of the frequencies in green of this picture. 
So if we go for red, it's here. These are the first 36 numbers out of uh, 24,000 or 40,000. These are the f in red. So this is a picture of that in X and Y. This is only for um, for X. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is for the first. Yeah. So in here you have uh, the picture of the of the numbers, and you see at the low frequencies is very high, and at the high frequencies it's very low. So it's a picture of the frequency domain in X and Y, and this is we had that we can have this rainbow stuff if you like. So that's the mountain of frequency domain of this picture. Now, it's called low pass filter. What we now do, we simply say we cut higher frequencies. We're not interested in it. So we, we let lower frequencies, so the big circles, which only need two rotations for the whole interval, or four rotations, three rotations, six rotations. But we cut things which are bigger than 12 rotations, for example. Simply forget the small circles. So the, the, low cir the, the big circles, so the low frequencies, pass. Therefore, it's called a low pass filter. <coughs> so we do that with these numbers. We simply and we illustrate that. And in this case, we simply say we only want to have the first three numbers, three frequencies. So two, three, and four. And you see, we simply took these guys here. And the rest not. And now we go back and make the picture out of it. So we make the overlay of these in X and in Y. So we have three numbers here, three numbers here in the frequencies. Make this overlay for red, green, and blue, and make then a color picture of it. So we have six colors per six numbers per color. So it's 18 numbers, not more. So this is red, this is blue, green, this is blue, and this is a color picture. 18 numbers. Make the same thing with 4 by 3 by 3, so it's 24 numbers, you have that. Make it with 6. Make it with 12. <laughs> you see how you, this works, huh? 1 and 20, no problem at all. That's it. And this is compression, huh? You simply say, I don't care <laughs> on the details, on the small circles for the, all the details. So the inverse thing is high pass filter, so forget the low. So cut the big mountains with the low circles, and you get these kind of pictures. So this is what is missing with the, this is exactly the picture what is missing with these fuzzy pictures we had in the first, with, with the low pass filter. So you have the fuzziness, and this is the, 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 the missing details. So if you make an addition of these, of this picture and the fuzzy picture here, you get the super crisp thing. Yeah? You got the idea. Play around, that's a game. We don't need more. End of chapter, I think. Yeah, interactive. Yeah, these are the, yeah, it's a little non intuitive. Normally, this uh, frequency domain is, uh, <coughs> is uh, 
represent it like that. It's not this. It's the same thing like I showed you here. It's one square out of of the frequency domain. <coughs> okay. Now more pragmatic stuff. So this is a theory. So don't. This is how it is about. <laughs> you have to, to distinguish between uh, the grids. So this time domain. The data format for that is uh, GIF. And you have to. Uh, <clears throat> these are particles. The the uh, the pixels. Then you have the waves. The waves are described with numbers. This is a frequency domain, frequencies and spectra. And you are able to transfer one to the other, crisscross with Fourier and inverse Fourier. And compression in wave, as we had it with low pass and high pass filter, is JPEG. Compression on pixel level is uh, with uh, GIF. That's the story. Okay, <clears throat> this is uh, craftsmanship, how to import, copy paste, or read from file, insert. So that's very, very simple. Copy paste, image formats. Uh, there are tons of them here. All pixel formats. GIF, JPEG are the most prominent. Uh, TIFF, PNG. These are what uh, raw is what you have on on, on, on professional cameras and, and so on. <coughs> you have these conversions at, as I told you last week. Whatever you have in principle with Mathematica, you can crystal. This is without problems, different from uh, mov movies and and videos. So load from file. <coughs> It's always very useful that you have uh, with this uh, system dialog input. And I say I want to have a JPEG. Go here. I gave you in our, in our um, uh, directory, I gave you some in sources. I have uh, images, for example, Neue National Gallery. Open that. And then I get my individual pass to this uh, file. That's very convenient, or you can <coughs> keep that file and, and, as, and, and symbolize it as file or save it, whatever you like. In this case, the Im image is simply import this file. That's it. Then you look for the channels, how many channels, how many dim dimensions it is. So you import it, very simple. 2000 by 1130 uh, pixels. And uh, here we uh, <coughs> say image resize, as grayscale, because here obviously even if it's a black and white picture it has three standard channels, it, I think it's RGB, make it to grayscale and it's faster, put it to 1024 in size instead of 2000 and uh, this is a function you can skip that or make it skip that. <coughs> so. And this is our picture within uh, Mathematica. This is how to load an uh, uh, image from file. Load from internet is very simple. It's the same story. Instead of file, you simply give the URL as you have it in, uh, in your internet browser. You get the URL. You sim instead of import file, you say import URL. So, and this is loading a file from this web page and uh, bring it in color uh, to our screen. Load all images from a web page. It's very simple as well. For example, you have uh, swissarchitects.com. <coughs> then uh, you have a nice uh, web page. Copy this, uh, go to, to this web page. Okay.
Yeah, okay. It looks like uh, <laughs> like this. <laughs> so, um, and you simply say sim a system. I oh know URL is here. System open. Now it's working. Okay, take this instead of copy paste. This is our web page, and now you want to have all the pictures of this web page. Simply say images is import this URL, images. Do this. And uh, go here, and then you see Magnify says give them half of the size, images, and then you have four images, these four big things of this page. You have them. You can make an automatic collage for your uh, album, and uh, that's it. So you can do that easily overnight with a small program from all the architects from Swiss Architect, make your poster, and uh, you have it. Yeah? Get an image, just how to get, where to get images from. Get all the images, get an image from graphics, plots or texts. Image from 2D graphics. <coughs> so, that's very interesting as well. So I create a graphics, for example here, <coughs> uh, 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 10 circles, uh, concentric, with 10 different diameters. So I start with diameter of 0.1 to 1 in steps of 0.1. I put that in form with this pure function. The pure function says it's in circle centered at OO with this variable, pure function, map infix notation of this list, step by step to this variable. So we have 10 circles with different diameters all around OO and wrap that as a graphics in a size of uh, 64. If I do that, I have these 10 circles. So, to make an image, like a photograph of these graphics, I put this to graphics, so I assigned it to the symbol GR. Now, image GR, image size 128. We have uh, this picture. So because we take a picture with uh, 72 dpa by default, and if I take it 72, this, uh, this, <laughs> the rendering of the screen is <coughs> uh, it's much higher. So we have problems with that, you see, it's from old, older times, so it doesn't fit. So what is a way out is that you take an image with image size bigger than 74, so you take 4 times 128, and then display it with one fourth of it, and then you get resolution of 4 times 72 dpi. So we can click around with it. It's not super convenient with mathematical resolutions and then quality data. But it's possible to do everything in very fine uh, quality. <coughs> so this is another way to, to get it with uh, line widths. Uh, thickness here is then, uh, instead of implicitly, we have an explicit uh, lim uh, uh, line width and then uh, can control that as well. As an image from a graphics. You can do it with all graphics. Take a graphics from your cat, load it, display it, make a screenshot, and you have a picture of it, whatever you like. Image from 3D, it's, uh, it's very similar. This, for example, is a, <coughs> is a contour plot. As we had it, this is. Um, you see, yeah, it's a, it's cosinus from x, sinus from y plus cosinus from y plus sinus from z, cosinus from z plus o. so it's a three-dimensional play as we had it with the waves for the image in 2D. So it's a three-dimensional place of waves to to make uh, to tune a three-dimensional space. 
So and then I say with control plot, where is this function zero? So it's always if you have a sinus wave, it's always at these points when it's uh, going through these axes, then you have points at zero. So if you do it in 2D with these waves, then you have the kind of circular oval uh, uh, rings in space. If you have 3D, you get these kind of nice forms. So it's a double curved surface where this formula here is zero. But it's a certain view to the, to the tuning of a space corresponding to certain numbers. So, this is my plot. Takes a lot of time, it's not this. So, here we are. And now I take a very high resolution, take a high resolution <coughs> image with the resolution of 288. And I export it to a, a file. Go here to desktop. And here we are. It is super nice. High resolution rendering. <coughs> so it's common to make these kind of things. Image from a text, <coughs> same thing. Take a text from a CSR, render it, bring it to a format, save it as a picture, the same story. Get an image from a sound, this is interesting. So we have uh, this sound. Yeah, a bird. <laughs> and then, you make a picture of the sound. This is a spectrogram. So what, what we are doing is, this sound is a second or two seconds. They're two seconds here, 1.8 seconds. And what they're doing is, they have these frequencies on sound. And they display in vertical the change of frequencies. So this is the density or the amplitude of the frequencies from 0 to 20,000. So you have 20,000 frequencies to define a sound. These are these circles. This is how sound spreads in, in space. With 20,000 circles, they overlay. So these are, at a certain time, the amplitude, so it's the strength of a circle from a certain radius. So this is changing over time. And now look here, here the bird. Yeah, <laughs> These are the low frequencies, these are the high frequencies. So at the end is going high. So this is called a spectrogram. Yeah. Of course you can print it and uh, go for high resolution and do architecture with it. It's a nice poster here. <laughs> the same story like with this um, contour plot. Okay, let's make a short break of, of uh, 10 minutes and we continue uh, five before full.